Yeah. Thank you for joining us on this very special edition of the Gavin and Zach show. It is Tuesday, March 11th. Yes, sir. 2014. Happy, Happy 311 day. Happy 311 day, everybody. I am Gavin. And I am Zach. And there are plenty of ways that you can get in touch with the program. You are on GavinandZachShow.com. You can also download us on the free mobile app, Stitcher, F R E E. You can also yeah. download us on the iTunes. Yeah. We record at Mr. Brandon Lackey's lovely lineup room. For more details and information on the studio, go to lineuproom.com. Yes. We're on Facebook, facebook.com slash Gavin and Zach show. On the Twitter at Gavin and Zach. And we are featured on Mr. J Do's <laughs> So Real Flicks, movie news and reviews, and uh, podcast. podcast. And we went full gusto today. Oh, we did. We had to go full gusto today because it is more than special in yes. the studio today. Very special edition. We're at Hollywood Gavin is Act today. We are. We are. It, it's usually us three zilches in here doing our thing. But now we've got the microphones, two guests, and lights and cameras galore. We do, man. We it, do. It, we, got, we got the LED lights flashing on us. Man, it's a big deal. Big things happening in here. Um, what's special about today's program is we have Nick Kovacic yes. in here. Snappies. Snappies on the enunciation. Yeah, Snappies on the... Yeah, exactly. I'm going to say it one more time just to prove that I can indeed say <laughs> Nick Kovacic, he is the director of Brewmore Baltimore, a documentary that's going to be released this... Not released, but there's going to be a screening March 20th at MICA. Brewmore Baltimore, it chronicles the past current presentation of brewing in baltimore and where it's heading in the future thank you for coming on the program hey guys how's it going doing well man it's good to have you on here thank you very much for having me what, what do you think of the studios you, we've, you you've been sitting in here for the past 30 minutes while we're setting everything up it's like a space shuttle in here it is it <laughs> is it definitely is i uh it's nice and quiet, and um, they got they got beer too, so yeah, that's yeah. pretty awesome. Hey man, yeah, yeah. anytime there's beer involved, it helps it out. So wait, you're in the middle of a press tour, right? So you're doing awesome. What what other stuff are you going to be doing? Are you going to be joining on the other shows or? Um yeah, right after this, um you know I'm go to Good Morning America, go over to CNN, you yeah. know, all <laughs> around the country. But I, I had to stop here first <laughs> and before I went around the world. My yeah. head just popped up like what? <laughs> yeah, man, if you go to Good Morning America, what the hell are you doing here? <laughs> no, Good Morning Baltimore is blowing up. <laughs> yeah right. Oh man, yeah, we're getting national right away, international. Um no, we're gonna go to um. We're gonna go to uh, Studio Unknown after this. Talk to those guys. They did the uh, sound design, re-recording, mixing, fully. Very cool. Basically everything you hear in the movie, uh, aside from Caleb Stein's in awesome job of um, composing the music for it. They did all the post-production sound on it. We're gonna visit them today, and then after that, we are going to uh, Brew Battle, which is uh, another. Uh, so it's a, you're headed all over. Yeah, yeah, we're going. You're all headed place, yeah. everywhere. You are, tr yeah. you are stacking up the miles on the old vehicle today, aren't you? <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's so great, man. You can get some more information if you want to hit them up. It's brewbaltimore.com, facebook.com forward slash. It's brewing in Baltimore. They even have a Twitter handle, twitter.com forward slash brewbaltimore, and you can get the tickets for the screening at missiontex.com. Yes, right. sir. And uh, brew more. Brewmore Baltimore. Brewmore Baltimore. Yeah. Baltimore. Yeah, Baltimore.com. Yeah. Yes, sir. Well, uh, yeah, man. So what? You started working on this project two years ago, correct? Around two years ago? Uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, it was, uh, I guess, two and a half years ago. Yeah, it was two and a half years ago. Okay. Um, what inspired me about the the idea was I like history and I like drinking beer. Yeah. And um, mm -hmm. there's a, there was a lot of things going on in Baltimore at the time. And this is uh, to put us in place at the correct time about 2010 yeah it's 2010 january okay. uh no it's new year's eve 2010 and we were actually just finished up a music video for um bosley bosley brown and uh we actually just finished up a, another music video actually this past weekend but anyway so he was gonna he was premiering his music video out of all places on the radio 
And the person huh. that came on before him was Maureen O'Pray, and she had just written this book about brewing in Baltimore. It's called Brewing in Baltimore, uh-huh. The History of Brewing in Beer in yeah. Baltimore. How simple. So, yeah. yeah. So Maureen O'Pray is on this show before Bosley, it's, and she just wrote a book called um, Brewing in Baltimore. And um, so heard the interview, got inspired about it. It's like, you know, somebody should do a documentary about this. There's a lot of history in Baltimore, and people don't realize realize it that the first industry in Baltimore was actually brewing beer. The wow. Barnett's family yeah. in the 18th century were the first people um, brewing beer in Maryland, in Baltimore. Wait, so, so is that the building with the big Natty Bow guy? Is, is that the, the factory that they did it in back in the day? Or um, Yeah, that was one of the many places um, at the turn of the century, the 19th, 20th century. There's over 40 production breweries yeah. in the city. Yeah. Wow, in that's just crazy. The city. Wow. Yeah. And when you think now, like, there's this big craft beer explosion in the country, um, to think that at one point in time that there was over 40 brewer- labels, beer brands, mm-hmm. in the city. Just wow. in Baltimore City, yeah, it's pretty crazy. I think, and we're drinking one of them right now, correct? Yeah, yeah, we're, we're drinking, drinking Natty Bow right oh, now. Oh, yeah. Natty Bow. Oh yeah. And the building with the uh, guy on the top of it is the National Brewery, and um, that has been there for almost two hundred years. Uh, or no, I guess yeah, it's close to you know one hundred fifty years, I guess. Yeah, yeah, something like that. But um, yeah, that it's no longer a brewery. But they took that build. That now it's an office building, actually. Okay. But yeah, uh-huh. that is like one of the uh, many breweries that were in the city, and um, actually is pretty cool because uh, uh, David Nip, who is actually in the movie, yeah. um, the property manager at the Natty Bow Tower, what it's called now. Mm-hmm. Um, they actually he took me down in the basement, and in the basement, all the storage tanks, yeah. cold storage tanks for the beer. Um, when they brewed it there, um, they brewed there until sometime, I think, uh, anyways, when they used to brew there, um, all those tanks and everything are all downstairs in the basement still. So it looks like, it, if you visualize it, it looks like six submarines sitting downstairs in the dark. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's wild. Yeah, that's, it, it sounds like a... Sounds like a, a a submarine down there, uh, yeah, like yeah. A, a bunch of uh, seamen down there yeah. just doing their thing. <laughs> yeah, right. It, it, it's crazy that you you bring up that there used to be so many breweries. You said upwards of forty breweries at any given moment, way back in the day. Mm-hmm. So Baltimore has this huge history of brewing beer. Like you, you like it, it's it's almost as if it's like Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, and like the Chesapeake Bay is literally just filled with booze. <laughs> yeah. that there used to be so many breweries here. And then just out of nowhere, they, it just, what happened? Like, did what, what made them, like, hit a brick wall? Um, it was, um, it really was prohibition, actually. Yeah. Yeah, it was prohibition. Really oh, okay. killed the breweries. And if the bigger breweries, if they could survive, and this is not just here, this is not just in Baltimore, this is nationwide. So before prohibition, there was, you know, you, you had, like, your local craft brewery or your local beer brand like yeah. every neighborhood had their own beer brand so right um you could like walk you know you go to like say down to dc you go to philadelphia you can go to new york you can go to yeah. atlanta and they all had like you know they may not have had over 40 brands but you know there were everywhere you went there was different brands everywhere so it's kind of like it's like that today we're pretty fortunate now that we have that yeah so um that's basically yeah that's what happened prohibition killed the wow. local brewer Goddamn prohibition, man. Screwing up the industry for us all. Mm-hmm. I had to resort to making it in the bathtub. Yeah, right? So, so wait, so, so, you know, you're creating a couple years ago, go by, and you realize you want to do this documentary. What were some of the ideas and goals that you wanted to highlight, I guess, in creating it? You know what I mean? What were, like, you had, like, a to-do list, I guess, of your outline? Yeah. What were some of those things you were hoping to accomplish? Um, so, when we... I, first thing I did was I bought the books. There's Maureen's book and then Rob Casper had a book that was coming out that came out a few months later uh, called Baltimore Beer. And um, they were both like history books on what was happening. So I bought both the books, read the books, contacted everybody. And in the meantime, what I did was I wrote basically a treatment okay, or an, an outline basically of this is all the goals I wanted to accomplish in the movie. And one of the most important things I wanted to put out there in the movie was I wanted to make the city... Baltimore City, um, and 
make make both. Uh, what I let me start over. One of the things I wanted to um, establish in the movie was Baltimore as a character in the movie. Right. That's cool. Uh, now you're thinking, you know, it's like, uh, how do you make like a geographical area a you could do that with baltimore easy (laughs) (laughs) baltimore is very much a character yeah (laughs) yeah exactly um and i think that i think that the city has like a lot uh, has tons of really cool buildings has a unique um it it has a unique history that's pretty big it's a Mm -hmm. big sprawling city but there is not a lot of people that you know i get maybe it's 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 uh let me, let me start over sorry so basically uh, I wanted to make Baltimore a character in the in the movie and so um, in order to do that I had to do I did a lot of research looked at like a lot right. of photos try to find as much yeah old stuff around the city as I could and I found a bunch of really great stuff and um, so when you watch the movie um, you'll see that the city is um, in a and is it really is a character in the movie and right. it's and it's a really positive positive place and there's a lot of good things that are going on there and i think a lot of times when you know you think about baltimore you think about the wire that, that's yeah, what, yeah. That, and that's yeah. the first thing I, everyone says any any time you go out of town you know what i mean yeah. you're from Bal- oh the wire Oh, Omar? Yes. It's like, no, man, there's so much more for right. this city yep. than The Wire uh, did, and Fayette Street. Yep, they, they may <laughs> as well just call it Wiremore. Yeah. You know, Wiremore, Maryland. Anytime you talk to anybody, even in Southern Maryland, in the same state, they go, yeah. oh, Baltimore, The Wire. And then they shake their head like like they know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the right. Wire, yeah. Yeah. But, yes, yeah. But, but Baltimore being a character, I mean, it's... It, it's... Baltimore is really interesting because I've always referred to Baltimore as the East Coast San Francisco if it was if it was a construction worker. If San Francisco was a construction worker, that's what Baltimore would be. You know, it, it's kind of like it, it's gritty, it, it's kind of dirty, and it's loud and in your face. Like, a, a, almost like a, a mini New York, if you will. Yeah, mm-hmm. a little bit, but, sure. And it, it's got its own personality. Yeah, it definitely has a like a strong personality. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, but yeah, no, I just wanted to show um, in it that there's been this, there's a long history in Baltimore. Uh, I think it was the first, is the first city to reach a million people. I believe. Wow, is it really? Sure, don't quote me on that. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. But um, no, I'm writing it down right yeah, now. You're being yeah, quoted right. on it. Right. Um, <laughs> Stat check, but there's the like all these cool buildings in yeah. the city, and there is this rich history, not just in brewing, but in uh, you know, the Star Spangled Banner inspired, yeah. and in, you know, uh, inspired Francis Scott Key, um, the yeah. Battle of Baltimore, 1812. Yeah, nobody knows that pretty much. Yeah, um, no one. that the uh, I don't. yeah, <laughs> I, I, knew, I knew he didn't know. He looked yeah. at me like, Whoa, yeah. what that happened? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So there's like, I mean, that's like one major thing, but there's also like, I mean, there's so much cool and rich history here and um, that the people to, you know, I just wanted to show some, basically a different light to the city. And uh, I think it, yeah. you'll, you'll see it, it comes across. I, I mean, the thing is like Baltimore, the way that it's placed on the East Coast, it's like right there. It's like it, Baltimore is not, it's technically a Southern city. But it's very much a northern city in terms of personality. It's like smack dab in the middle of everything, and it's it's a harbor city, so it has a little bit of everything that's in it. So it's kind of all over the place in terms of personality. Right, and um, yeah, it's the furthest inland. The what makes it ideal port city is it's the furthest inland uh, port city. Oh, okay, okay. Yep. so it's easier access to get to points west. And it's also a protected harbor. Yep. So very mm-hmm. cool. Um, so a lot of the like immigrants during the nineteenth and early twentieth century, one of the main one of the main lines, uh, one of the main steamship lines, yeah, to uh, come here was from uh, Hamburg, Germany. To and yeah. they basically dropped you off in Baltimore. So like uh, Yingling family, DG Yingling, yeah. yes, like he came. They their family they came to Baltimore and. He was used to his style of beer, the type of beer 
he brewed or where he came from, he wanted to find a place that was similar to that. So he came to Baltimore. Um, and then from there he went to, uh, Pottsville. Is that where it is? Yeah, like Pennsylvania. Yeah. Pottsville, Pennsylvania. And that was more ideal. And they were able to, that's where he set his brewery up there and, you know, dug out the, um, the, um, caves and everything for lagering and everything. But, um, yeah, that's basically, he, that's crazy he though. He came to Baltimore first. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. That, that's, that's wild. That's awesome. Yeah. And a lot of people came, came through Baltimore and I think I have it as it's the second to second or third to um ellis island um mm -hmm. new york wow for during yeah. that time period of people coming this to is like a history yeah. lesson today man yeah. wow learning all yeah. sorts no, of stuff ellis island angel island and then baltimore city well <laughs> I, I mean what you, you've already shared some cool facts about baltimore but like in when you were creating this document i mean are, are there any like cool stories that you had that you like you learned about baltimore that i mean obviously you've already told us some but what like what might be one like the biggest one that stood out to you like the story that you didn't know about until you started working on Brewmore? Um, well, there are so many stories um, when we were when we were filming um, that are pretty mem memorable. Um, but one thing that really stood out to me, and I think I realized it once we got more into post production when we were editing this together, was um, how parallel history is so the things that people were doing a hundred years ago are do we do the same yeah it's the same thing going on now yep. is that a hundred years ago in baltimore there was you know like i said there was all, over 40 breweries and yeah. um some uh, you know group of men they got together and they had a great idea of hey you know we're all competing for the same market share why don't we just get together and we become um one and so there's under, a sense of camaraderie there. Well, it's the monopoly, the monopoly of it. So it's like nowadays, like where not so much now, but or even now, but you have these mega beer brands that yeah. are that own, you know, you have ABM, ABM, yeah, yeah, all yeah. that. So, you know, there's, you know, the big three or big five, yeah. whatever, you yeah. have these mega breweries, but it's the same thing that was going on back then, but on a smaller sca scale, um, that at the turn of the 19th, 20th century, they, they, you know, all these beer brands got together and they formed a trust, the Maryland, mm -hmm. uh, brewing company. And, um, then, then that, you know, people locally were like, we're not going to go for that. We want to go for the independents. Yeah. Independent breweries that didn't sign up for this. Right. And, and, that it didn't last and people um then they formed another trust but anyways till prohibition and then yeah. prohibition killed everything but people wanted the independent brewery over the monopoly brewery or the larger breweries because um that's you know they they were willing to pay a little bit more for the um for the independent brand for like the underdog oh, and man. it's the same thing now for like you know craft beer or the smaller beers yeah that people want to buy local and support local business and it's instead of you know some mega corporation wherever they're located and it's really interesting too because craft like beer and alcoholic beverages things like that people are more than willing to spend just a, a, a couple extra shekels on beer but that's like not true for anything else in like, food, yeah. Yeah, in, yeah. in food and everything. Walmart is so huge. <laughs> and like people will go there to buy everything, but for whatever reason, it just translates to craft brews and things like that. People are willing to spend a little extra for beer, but not for a, a, a Bud a, Light. A, <laughs> a, 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 like a mop or, yeah. or a steak or something like that. It, it's really because beer just it touches the heartstrings. <laughs> it, it, makes, it, it makes you feel good. It <laughs> does. That's for sure, man. That's yeah, and I, I think that um, the. I think it's also uh, that it's easier to get in touch with the the product. I guess I don't know. I don't know. I maybe it's like all the brewer, brewers that we met from um, uh, Union Craft, uh, Stillwater, the Brewers Art, um, Heavy Seas. The, they're they're featured in the documentary, but then there's all the other breweries that are in town, um, Flying Dog, and. Um, the brewery in Peabody Heights, the Raven Beer. There's um, the um, oh my gosh, I can't there's, there, there, there's so many of them. I mean, yeah, you go to a liquor store each time, and I feel like I'm seeing like a new six pack. I'm like, who's this? And it was probably circa 2010 
that there was this like major explosion because I would go into the local shops and look around and the folks that were working there would be like, yeah, yeah, this is a local brew. And I'm like, it is? And that was around like 2007-ish, you know? Yeah. It was, for whatever reason, somehow, some way, when the recession hit, all they all started to pop up everywhere. Mm -hmm. And, and it, it seems almost the opposite of what would have happened, but it, they... They took a chance, and a lot of these breweries just and it worked. Achieved, yeah, and it worked. I guess, I guess, beer is almost recession proof. So, yeah. so, 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 wait. So, you said some of the people that you worked with, what were um, Union Craft, Stillwater, uh, Heavy Seas, correct? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, how how were they? Like, like, so, did you? I guess you just went up to them and told them your, what your idea was. Were they happy to help out, or, or like, you know, how, how was that process of getting them in, on board and involved? Um, yeah, it's funny because at first I basically, what I did was I just searched people out and, uh, got in contact with them, but yeah. one person led to everybody else. Like the, yeah. the Brewers Association of Maryland is the organization of all the breweries yeah. in Maryland, Bre breweries and the, the brands and the, uh, that, that basically is the brew pubs. The all the different brands, the breweries. Um, there's multiple levels of breweries too, um, and they're all in this um, this organization together. And basically, when I contacted one, they were like, "Hey, you should talk to so and so over at, you know, um, over at Union Craft or talk to, you know." So it literally, was just like um, word of mouth. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Um, and really, um. There is so like when we started making this documentary, there were um, so many um, new. There's been so many more brands and breweries that have uh, popped up since we stopped filming. Wow! But, yeah, you know, I couldn't include. I wish I could have included everybody into it, but that there's so many. You know, there's new there's new laws in Maryland that have made it a little bit easier for um, these small businesses. And right. they're they're small businesses, they're entrepreneurs, uh, they're artists. Um, I consider the what they do an art form, oh, definitely. Um, yeah. an ancient art form. And um, there's more of them that have popped up all across all across Maryland. And one one of the most interesting uh, laws that has popped up is the um, I'm, I'm not sure the name of it, but basically it's 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 easier now for a agriculture a farm to um get a license to become a brewery if you grow one of the ingredients hmm. like hops wow basically if you grow hops yeah mm -hmm. um and you hmm. have the acreage you could become a, you can build a brewery that's wow well i mean it, hmm. it, it's funny you mentioned how you said it's kind of like an art form i think i think it's cool for all like these companies to do it but what you also highlighted some home brewers too mm -hmm. i think i mean i think that i mean i think yeah. that's an awesome what they do they don't have the crazy equipment like some of these breweries do, but they still can make some fantastic beer. I mean, yeah. How, how was that? Like talking to some home brewers, was that? Um, yeah, actually, home brewing is pretty interesting in that this is how everybody gets started in in brewing beer. Is that most of these guys, every single one of these guys that that's in every yeah everybody that's in the movie um, start from home brewing. Everybody has they have this initial passion for beer through home brewing. Wow. And um, what's funny about and and there's lots of women that homebrew too. There's there's a whole club in Baltimore called Lady Brew. Oh really? That is yeah. What, wow. And they make really good beers. My girlfriend she brews beer, and wow. her and I together we brew beer together. Um, and I thought when I was making the movie, you know, I should probably brew some beer because I understand the process, but I've never done it before. I should probably just brew some beer. So now I've been brewing beer for, um. A year and a half and now. And it's, it's a trial by error sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, my, my beer is not that great. I, <laughs> I make okay beer, but I, I don't think I'm a really great brewmaster. First couple batches, you had the bitter beer face. <laughs> You're like, oh, yeah. no, 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 Well, no. I, you know, I made, like, all different t styles of beer. But anyway, so the home brewing thing is cool because, you know, if you got a pot and you got access to water... And the ingredients to make beer in electric or gas, then you could make you can make beer. It's that easy. Like you can do it, man. 
Start yeah. home brewing. If I did it, I'd kill myself. <laughs> I would definitely die from overdose of hops. I'd be like, oh, just throw a bunch of hops in there. Yeah. Yeah, then I'd and die. There's cool, innovative ways. Like That's the cool thing about home brewing is that you could... There is a vast community. There's a huge community online um, that... There's people that share information on all yep. these forums all over the place. Yeah, wow. this is what I do. Homebrewtalk.com. There's there's forums about like every if you go on there and you just click on the recipes, you're like, oh my gosh, there's like pages and pages and pages and pages and people like totally passionate and dedicated to the craft of every single imaginable beer style mm-hmm. possible. And that's what's so cool about the time we live in now is that, you know, we're not it's not like just uh light uh, we're not all just drinking like a light pilsner or American lager yeah. anymore. People are getting creative, man. Yeah, all I know. sorts of stuff. Yeah, and the home brewing is there's homebrew competitions, there's clubs, there's multiple clubs in Baltimore. In the movie, we have the original club, which is the Cross Street Irregulars, which was founded by Hugh Sisson in the late '80s when they started brewing beer okay. at Sisson's, which is now was Clipper City, which is now Heavy Seas. Mm-hmm. He founded that club, and that's the oldest club. But there's Balto Brew, there's Lady Brew. Um, I mean, there's homebrew shops. There's Nepenthe in wow. Baltimore, Maryland homebrew. There's tons of shops. Yeah. Um, where you can go get your supplies and the equipment, or you could, what's really cool is you could you engineer and make your own equipment uh-huh. to like make beer, which is cool. And um, yeah, it's cool. It's really rewarding making the beer. The hardest part is. Uh, drinking all the beer. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it doesn't sound like it's hard, but it is kind of hard. And it is like when you brew a bad batch, like I brewed batch, it was not that good. We, we like, would try to drink all of it. <laughs> yeah, we would try. Make I tried. <laughs> I tried. Yeah, five and a half gallons, and I, I tried <laughs> oh, to drink man. it, and I, I ended up just pouring it down. The just, sink. just, just dive right. <laughs> yeah. Because I, 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 was, I saw the trailer. Like many men, I told you, I probably yeah. watched it like twenty times. Yeah, it, it, yeah. Re- it gets you going. Yeah, it definitely gets you going. It's like, I, like I jumped up. I was like, I'm gonna start my own brew. And yeah. then, but it, it's really interesting because you go into a basement at one point and you got the big tanks everywhere. And I'm just like, man, I want to run and swan dive in one of those things, yeah. just do the backstroke for a couple hours. <laughs> but I'm actually really interested in some of the stories that you may have stumbled across during the prohibition days. Like, did you, like, w- were there a lot of underground shops where people would go and, Kind of like you know, c- come on down here, see. Yeah, you know, we're gonna be <laughs> like brewing speak, our beer, speak, like speakeasies and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You just say a yeah. password to get in. <laughs> yeah, there were. Um, okay, so Maryland never. So what Maureen told me when we interviewed her, and it not all of it's in the final film, but we're not um, getting you in trouble right now, are you? No, 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 no. Okay. no. All right, good. no, but um, she told me that um. So you have the uh, Maryland never Governor Ritchie at the time. I'd uh, never we never passed a law um, against prohibition, like in the state. So it was basically just the feds, right? Okay, that were enforcing it's federal law prohibition, like right. yeah, like with marijuana in Colorado now mm-hmm. and in um, Washington now, is that the state has decriminalized it you can buy it there the only people that can enforce it are when the feds come around yeah so it was the same exact thing back then but instead of um marijuana it was uh alcohol so but you could get you could get alcohol if prescribed to you by a doctor if you had you know an ache in your leg, or you had some arm aches, or you got a headache. I have, I have a lot of aches, man. Yeah, basically any kind of ache, and you had the money. <laughs> what about a bad day at work? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, basically one? any Headache. aches or pains, and you had the money, you can get a prescription from a doctor, hmm. and you could have alcohol medicinally. But um, basically, they didn't enforce it in Maryland, and that's why it was called the Free State. And that's why they had that bar at Camden Yards called Free State. Oh, bar. wow. That's, yeah, that's wild. And Learn something um, every day. Yeah. they uh, so they didn't. There was no enforcement other than the um, federal bureau of uh, prohibition. But um, but what she told me was when a bar or a tavern, like say down in Fells Point, like down uh, or in Canton Square, yeah, um, down by the docks, when they had beer, they would put a sign out that said "Fresh Fish." And if you knew that you saw that sign, you knew that they had. Oh, that, that was the serving, code word right there. They're serving alcohol. I mean, probably beer, whatever. But yeah, uh, apparently, what they made in the breweries 
the breweries that survived during that time in the city, the larger ones, um, like the American Brewery that was on uh, North, that's on North Gay Street, um, Globe Brewery where the convention center is now on Conway, mm-hmm. um, they would uh, they would make like near beer, which is like non-alcoholic beer, and they make ice basically. That's what they would make. But from what I'm told is they would actually brew real beer every once in a while, I think. But also, um, you could buy hops and you could buy malt for medicinal purposes. Yeah. And there was a recipe that was passed around, like you said. Yeah. There's a recipe passed around. If you mix this and that in your bathtub, yep. you may end up with something like beer. <laughs> <laughs> and so people did that and people also homebrewed. But when prohibition was repealed, and they're able to start brewing again. Home brewing was still illegal. Yeah. So it wasn't, and that's why um, I think why there was not a lot of. That's why you had like just those big breweries brewing the same style beer. Yeah. Was because of that, and it wasn't until like the late seventies that Jimmy Carter had passed a law making home brewing um, legal hmm. again. Well, good, so, good, good for Jimmy, Jimmy Carter. Carter was good for yeah. something. <laughs> good yeah. for Jimmy Carter. Man. That and uh, that's why there, I think that's why you don't see like a lot of like um and but like distilling like spirits at your house is still illegal. Yeah, and yeah. It's probably it's probably Moon actually shining, a good yeah. thing. Yeah, because you could blow yourself up. Like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's not, I'm not trying to do that. But that's why there isn't like a lot of there isn't like a lot of like craft like types of uh like spirits got you i wish they would just make brewing illegal for a day that way i could just go into one of these shops and then when the feds come in they hit the dick tracy button and the wall <laughs> turns around and <laughs> just a lady knitting yeah like what this is a knit shop here this yeah. is what's going on there ain't no brewers here what are you talking about we don't even drink beer yeah <laughs> wait wait so all right so it seems like uh, we obviously are getting a, a little history lesson on be- the history of baltimore and beer and everything but after creating this documentary and talking to some of the breweries and home brewers etc you sense that the uh, the future of the beer industry in Baltimore is good. It, it is very positive. Yeah, it's really positive. It's really strong. Um, I mean, we could have probably kept going on and on. Probably made this movie it probably three hours long, a... man, like Wolf of Wall Street style. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, it probably could have taken like Martin five... Scorsese, Titanic. Right. Yeah. Five, yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> it would have taken like probably five years to make, and we could have probably still not have finished the movie if we had like interviewed everybody that was starting up in the city. Yeah. By the time we had we had ramp down the production and all the other things that were happening the sequel sequel yeah, to exactly, Brewmore, yeah. baltimore Brewmore, maryland yeah <laughs> brew even more yeah, listen, listen, brew if, everywhere. If, if you want to launch the teaser that you're going to be making a sequel you can on the show go <laughs> ahead we're just kidding with yeah you. brew even <laughs> more part yeah. two electric boogaloo <laughs> yeah. yeah we'll just call yeah we'll call it brew more brew more <laughs> everywhere um <laughs> the uh yeah i know but you got like um all the other breweries that that have opened up since i mean you have well, obviously, the Pratt Street Ale House has been around for a long time. Oliver's yeah. beers. You have, um, I mean, outside the city, there's just so many. You got Evolution. You got uh, Milk House, Monocacy, Flying Dog. Um, the National Premium is back now. Oh, uh, uh-huh. Tim Miller bought that brand. and they, that, that was the other beer that National Brewery, National Beer had brewed other than Natty Bow or National Bohemian. They brewed National Premium. So that's now back. Um, you have full tilt. They make the burger cookie. Oh here. yeah, yeah, yeah. Bur- yeah, that? burgers yeah. a local joint too. Oh yeah, yeah. burger cookie. Um, you have the third. I think it's third shift. Is the other guys? Yeah, and the yeah. Raven beer. Mm-hmm. All those guys that they they're all in the same facility together. Um, and then there's even like you know there's all that you know there's tons of beer and there's yeah. tons of wine and there's some distilleries and you got the cidery sounds amazing it, it, yeah, it's, it's looking awesome. good man baltimore is a good place yeah. to be if you want to get your drink on so it sounds yeah. like adult chuck e cheese here right yeah. now <laughs> yeah, yeah just right dive into a ball pit except it's just filled with beer that's, and wine that's yeah. fine with me and just <laughs> stuffing burger cookies down your gullet yeah the screening is going to be on march 20th it's uh from 6 p.m until 11 p.m uh the tickets are only eight bucks yeah okay and you can get your tickets there at brewmorebaltimore.com. Uh, they got the Facebook as well, facebook.com forward slash it's brewing in Baltimore. Twitter handle is twitter.com forward slash brew Baltimore. And uh, they, they, what they also said, I think another ticket deal for the, uh, the event on the, the 20th uh, yeah. is $16. Admission 16 for, bucks can't yes, beat that. Admission for, and three drink tickets. Oh. From potential some local brewery. Yeah, and as long as it's a local brew, any three beers is good. It, it, you could pretty much just close your eyes, put a blindfold on, 
and just reach your hand out and grab one, and it's it's going to be a good time. Oh yeah, good that's time. for sure. I uh, you your boys will definitely be there. I will be there probably with no pants. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry, I, but I will, I'm really excited about it. Because like I told you, Zach, I, I've, I've seen the preview for it like 20, 30 times. Yeah. And each time I've watched it, it's just been it, it's just more pumped each time. Because it, it's, it's something you can really be proud of because it's right in your backyard. That's for sure. You know? like it, and it's different than when you watch The Wire and, you, and you're like, oh, well, this is... This is in my backyard, but yeah. it's not really flattering here. <laughs> I'm not trying to see spider bags being dealed around here, you know? Yep, so trade the uh, body bags and the chalk lines for <laughs> some for some good brew. You know, you want to drink, have a good time, and enjoy something that is local. It's definitely going to be the place to be. Your boys are going to be there, and uh, I'll be easy to spot because I'll be the one walking around in uh, boxers. Right. I- <laughs> I, I I wonder if there's any way like like I wonder if we, we can ask him can we do like a live can we like bring like the Yeti and do like a live broadcast at the Brew More hmm. thing is that a possibility something we might have know. to ask it could be a possibility a, a, a Nick potentially you know we'll have to see we were just throwing around the idea of potentially going to the screening and recording a live podcast uh, is that is that a potential I mean you know like like, like we'll, we'll be set up like on the on the outskirts but you know anybody that wanted to come over and talk to us. We'll be your we'll be your live broadcasters that aren't on the air. We'll keep our we'll keep our chicanery to the periphery. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think that that's possible. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah, I mean, it could happen. Yeah, we we should talk about it some more, man. We could <laughs> we could make it happen. We get the power in the hand. So you ready for the big day? You have anything else you need to do? I I know you're doing the tour right now, uh, the press tour. But you you excited for the big day? Um. Yeah. Yeah. I am. <clears throat> I am really excited for the big day. It's right around the corner. Yeah, it's coming fast, it's coming man. Quick. I'm really not nervous. It's just the uh, the logistics of of it. Yeah. Um, putting together the event is uh, yeah. It's a. Uh, pretty... Is it gonna be a suit and tie day? Yeah, it's gonna be totally suit to- and tie. Yeah, <laughs> totally suit and tie. Three piece suits. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, uh, I'm just gonna wear probably a tuxedo shirt. <laughs> there you go. That, that that that's more the style. There you <laughs> go. In a top I, hat. I have one of those. I have one of those actually. <laughs> so I mean, what what do you hope? The outro credits roll out. Everybody starting to claps. What are you hoping that viewers take away from uh, Brewmore Baltimore? Um, I hope that everybody comes away from the event. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I drank your beer. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, cheers. cheers. cheers we're, all, we're all friends here now anyway. Yeah, yeah cheers, man. Yeah. <laughs> um, I hope that uh, everybody just comes away from the event. Um, Drunk. No, nah, no. Nah, like, I hope everybody just comes away from the event with, uh, you know, this is a great experience. I learned a few things, and the movie is okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, I got to be honest with you. Watching the trailer, I, I've seen it many times, and it, it made me want to just get all of the beer, combine it in a beer helmet, and just drink it constantly. Yeah, and those are all the best parts of the movie. Yeah, I, 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 I was going to say, man, I mean, I've, I've learned a lot in this, what, the last 30 minutes talking to you, man. I, I mean, all, all I've seen is the trailer. I can't even imagine what I'm going to learn, you know? So um, it, It's definitely something that I think anybody in this neighborhood, the surrounding areas, can be proud of. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So we can, it, it's in your backyard. You know, it's it's not like the wire where you're like, yeah, yeah, that's that's here. I guess it's a good show, but it's not flattering. Yeah. But you know, it's something you could be proud of, and it it feels like it's something that you're a part of when you when you watch the trailer. So it's definitely going to be a good time for us. I, I'm actually re- I'm really looking forward to going down and checking it out. Real, real quick, I I know we got to get rolling here, but uh, we, real, this is something we always do when we have guests on the show, mm-hmm. and uh, we do a quick rapid fire. We, we, so we, we've learned more about the director, Nick Kovacic. We want to learn more about the person, the person behind the camera. So real quick, we're going to do a quick little rapid fire if you're cool with that. Mm-hmm. All right? Mm-hmm. Oh, like word here association. We go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. R- real quick, man. These are easy questions. These are qu- easy questions. Nothing okay. crazy. All right. Favorite beer? <laughs> That's a tough one. We're going off the top with a tough one right there. Man. You're trying to get him in trouble. Uh, wait, 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 favorite beer? I mean, do you have a favorite beer? I mean, will that get, will that get you in trouble? Oh no, no, no! It won't get me in trouble. No, no, no! Because I'll just uh, wait. Let me think about it really fast. Real yeah, fast. yeah, yeah. That's a tough. Yeah, there's man. so many to choose from. I know. I know. Okay, okay, okay. What do you got? Uh, Delirium Tremens. Oh, okay. Very nice. Okay. All right. You have a visitor coming to Baltimore for the first time. Where do you take them? Ooh. 
Um, the top of the Bromo Seltzer Tower. Okay, cool. <laughs> Most inspiring film. Back to the Future 2. <laughs> no, <laughs> nice, money. <laughs> fa- 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 <laughs> fa- favorite band? Uh, face to Face. Never heard of them. Have to check them out. Favorite TV show? Even though you said, what, 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 what would you say? <laughs> all time TV show. Uh, favorite TV show? Hmm. It could be all time. It doesn't have to be current. Okay. Yeah, okay. Favorite TV show? Yeah. Come and knock on our door. <laughs> Who, who's the boss? Tony Danza? Yeah, right, yeah. Who's the boss? No, no. Uh, what's that? <laughs> Full house. Uh, no, you know, actually, I've been watching a lot of Saved by the Bell. Nice. Yeah, oh, Saved by Zach the Bell. Morris, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah Zach Morris it. phone. Uh, <laughs> if, if we gave you a plane ticket to go anywhere in the world, where are you going to go? Hmm. I'm going to go back to Iceland. Oh, go back. back to Iceland. Back. It Damn. implies he's been there before. Must have left an, uh, a nice impression. All right. What's something on your bucket list? Hmm. Um, I got to get down to Australia sometime this year. So, so we, you, can take year. Your t- you can take your ticket. I can go to Australia. Yeah, yeah, you can, yeah, and geez. you can cross it off yeah. the bucket list. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. And one last thing, man, for you. One piece of advice to up-and-coming filmmakers, man. What would you say? Anything? Um... Gosh, I, I would say basically stick with it. Um, persistence and is key. Yeah. yeah. And um, you got an idea and you want to do something, go for it. Yeah. Um, and always work on projects that you love. There we go, man. Yep. It's a lot easier to stick up, stick with something if you really like doing it. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess one last time. It's, uh, Br- it's Brumore Baltimore is the film. You can get your tickets at brewmorebaltimore.com. Facebook, again, is facebook.com forward slash it's brewing in Baltimore. Twitter.com forward slash a brew Baltimore. I can't wait. Yeah, man, it's going to be a great time. We appreciate you coming on here, man. Thank yeah. you for making us a part of your press tour. It's been a nice learning session. Good to talk to you, man. And we're, you know, we're happy for you, man. I mean, a little cheers for Brewmore Baltimore, man. Hopefully yeah. it's some success cheers. for you. Yeah, man, hopefully it goes well and uh, gets, you know, good. A lot of people like it, man. Really and well. as always, do what you can to share the show, GavinAndZachShow.com, the Facebook, the Twitter. We're on Stitcher as well, iTunes, whatever the venue is that you're listening to the program. Be sure you share it. Yes, sir. As always. So share the show, take your vitamins, and as always, wear your condoms. It has been the Gavin and Zach Show today with Nick Kavasik of Brewmore, Baltimore. Real life continues tomorrow.